Hey guys, this is Tim from Tips Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now in this video we will be opening this mysterious package. Well, I already know what's in here. It has kindly been sent to me by a great friend of mine uh, who's also a supporter of my channel. And this contains something interesting which he bought and it went boom and yeah, of course he got a refund. But today we're going to try to, well, actually maybe fix it. And then we've got something new for the lab. So let's just rip this over. This is very unbalanced. It's like really uh, tilting this way. So the sticker is correct. Let's peel that off. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel and this will keep me motivated to publish new videos like this and to well, actually make a project because I've got a rather large amount of projects coming up for the channel. Alright, we're starting to get inside of the box. It'll take a while. So put this aside, have a little peek, and there she is. Now, maybe this looks familiar to you, but this is actually. No, I'm not. Yeah, you already know what it is. It's a soldering station. A quite, uh, quite a heavy soldering station. Oh, including a new tip. Wow. And all the heating filaments. Jape or Yabe. This is just bedding, and this is the actual soldering station itself. Oh, it's quite heavy. So let's have a look at this thing. Oh, it's uh, oh yeah. Oh, it's really heavy for such a well small. It isn't that small, but it's also not that big. It's quite uh, dusty and dirty. Now this is it, the Jape UD 1200. It's a soldering station purchased on AliExpress, which is fine if you pick the right one. And uh, this is a very good soldering station, but it just went boom on him. Which is unfortunate. I think this is for the, uh, for the water. It's pretty nice. So I'm really keen on getting this to work because this is a 130 watt soldering uh, iron. And that's really good compared to my puny little 20 watt soldering iron that I'm using right now. I suggest that we tear this thing apart to see how she looks on the inside and hopefully repair this. Because this is actually a rather expensive soldering station. It costs around 170 uh, euros, which is very expensive. And I can already see the big transformer over there. Are we able to just. Oh, this one is still. All right, so the soldering station. Oh. This is the main PCB. And let's do a quick, there's a fuse over there. So let's do a quick test on the fuse. Check if that's uh, still okay. 
that is okay now i thought i saw a fuse on here as well check if that's okay yep that's also fine and he said that there was a trace next to the screen completely burned out now i'm supposing that that's on the other side of the board because i don't really see something over here it's all looking well good not really burned or something so let's uh, actually remove the pcb now i'm going to remove this connector and what's this for oh i think this is an earthing wire which is rather nice yeah i think that's just an earthen wire so remove this and this is for the fan so i can also remove that so let's take this pcb out of here oops and try to identify what the problem is now he said that it's probably caused by a bad temperature measurement system it was on at max load for too long and that caused the pcb traces to uh, heat up enough to just burn away apparently so the pcb trace acted like a fuse which is yeah rather surprising Let's see how we can there you go so the screen is out uh, and i can i can see something over here i think that this has arced over so this connector is actually melted which surprises me because then the transformer went like this and the transformer must have gotten hot i guess by the actual glance of it this looks fine all the ic seem to be intact this one is a little bit dirty these some of the solar connections are yeah a little bit weird but this i'm really not sure what happened over there it's just gone try to clean it up a little bit there's some alcohol hmm there's flux residue on there Just gently trying to get that to go away. Now this may be a three or four layer board. And when that's the case, there may be burn traces on the inside layers of this thing and that will be a shame because we can't reach them those obviously let's try to see where those traces are going and try to check if they're uh, shorted out over there this is the ground plane the top one and the bottom one is connected to these things and they're not touching so this trace is they're not shorted so let's see if we can power this thing up in one way or another and actually see what it does so let's screw in all four of the screws 
but we will also give the temperature element and the temperature sensing circuitry inside the soldering handle a quick test. Also off. Let's connect it. There are a couple of connections in there. This one is the pin for the temperature sensing element and I guess that it's referenced to the earth. This is a few ohms. And let's try to heat it up and see what happens. This is really changing a lot. So the temperature sensor is between this one and this one. Two point seven ohms. Let's see what happens when we heat it. So the resistance does seem to increase. When you heat it up, so that's good. That works. So the elements are not broken. Now the question is, is this handle broken or something? Now I guess that we're unable to open it. So now we should test the resistance when it's plugged in, which it still is. So we can test the resistance. So that's the, I googled it and we need to test the green and red wire. And that's the resistance and this is the heating element. Oh uh, no, this is the heating element. And this is the resistance. So that all works. So the, the connector is fine. It all works, but it still thought that it was not hot enough and just pumped uh, current into the device. And that of course didn't go well. Let's just try to see what actually happens when we apply power to it. Welcome soldering station. Twenty degrees. It's fluctuating by a lot. Let's heat it up. One hundred degrees. So that seems to work. So let's heat it up a little bit more. Three hundred and twenty-five. Maybe we'll do this on the mat. Hey. No, I don't want you to power on. All right, I've rotated it so you can see it a little bit better. Now let's heat up the soldering tip with my iron. And let's see what it does. Now it looks to be just fine. It's slowly but surely increasing. 
But it is increasing. So I'm not sure what the actual problem is, but it does look like it's just functioning fine. Well, we haven't applied power yet. Let's see what the current temperature of this thing is. Standing by 100 and what we could do is we could try to measure the accuracy of the probe with a thermocouple. I've got one laying around, so let's do that. All right, so we've got a K-type thermocouple. And I'm not sure if it's at 100 degrees. Yeah, it's not that hot. This is also touchable, so it's definitely not at 100 degrees. But let's heat this thing up. We've got it set at 50. One hundred rupees on that's not that's not true. So it's not really putting any power into it. Which is good. Still one percent, but it's not doing anything. Eighty. Now it's starting to do something. So apparently eighty is the minimum amount of temperature you you need to set before this thing actually starts doing something oh it just quit it I think yeah it's definitely heating up I can feel it heating up in my hand and I think that the software that's limiting the display indicator to not go above 80 degrees because you don't really want overshoot to be visible, it's just reached its target temperature. The cable is also starting to get rather hot. The wire is really getting hot. Standby temperature is not 80 degrees, man. It's not 80 degrees, definitely not. So something is up with, presumably, this handle and since there oh, since there is a screw on the connector i suppose that we'll just take apart the handle uh, connector and see what's inside here i'm really wondering how good these contacts are yeah the transformer is really hot let's do a basic test first because without anything connected to the actual soldering handle there should not be a resistance between the power pins which there isn't no there is uh, no resistance in this thing with a tool installed there should now be a resistance across the heating filament one ohm well, that's a little too much. What about the temperature? Yeah, here's your problem. But one ohm definitely is too much. Or too less, I mean. That's basically a dead short. And if we measure the resistance over here, it's not a dead short. It's 3 ohms, which is what you kind of expect. If outside of the handle it measures around 3 ohms, it's very strange that once it's inside the handle it measures around, well, basically nothing. That's really strange. Because this is the thermocouple. Yes, and this is the heating element. The same. 
How can they be the same value? Heating element, three ohms, which is correct. Three ohms. The temperature is 0 0.5 ohms. So heating Wait, I think that I know what the problem is. Yeah, I think that I know what the problem is, that I just didn't insert the filament far enough. Otherwise, it just basically shorts. If this is the solution, damn. Would be a hell of a soldering station, this. And I just ordered new tips for the other soldering station. Oh, well, apply power to it. There you go, welcome. It's basically shooting up let's remove it well, it's nicely modulating now let's see what happens when we try to heat up a ground plane and the cable is not getting hot. Try to measure the temperature. That also explains why the soldering tip handle got so hot. Because it was basically just pumping power into the thermocouple. It's at 100 degrees. But it is increasing. 230 degrees. I think we should start to see solder melting at this point. Yeah, a little, little, little bit of solder was mounting. So it just had a chance to cool down. Let's see it rise again. It's at target temperature, 280 degrees. It's, it's so now we definitely should see some solar melting. Which is actually happening fine. And let's try to heat up the ground plan of this board. Oh yeah, that's really hot. So this is working. This is working quite good actually let's try soldering to that same ground plane it's look it's massive the ground plane is basically the whole PCB and also on the top side so if we can solder something to this thing we know for sure that it's working now 280 degrees is a little bit on the low side as well for the temperature but it is working, so let's ramp it up. 333, what? Can't we go above? We can't go above 333, that's rather curious. But it does really solder nicely on this big ground plane. But, wow, I mean, it's working. It's literally working. So let's turn this off and let's actually just basically put it back together and then we've got a working soldering station. So guys, quick update, I've been testing this thing a little now and it seems that a solution to prevent the tool from overloading and pumping all its power into the thermocouples wires is to wrap this piece so where the two meet with some captain tape so again nice wrap the camera focus yes and let's install this and it's heating up as it should. 
Let's explore the menu. Here we've got the station settings. Change pin. Oh, you can... Oh, the pin, as in pin code. Power 30 watts. Ah, uh, you can raise the power limit. Uh, of course, that's what we want. 130 watts. Maximum temperature, there you go. Let's raise that a little, 480. Minimum temp, yeah, beep, lock. Shut, sleep shut. Right, yeah, let's do that one. Back, tool settings. Fix one, fix one temperature, sleep temperature. Stop delay, temperature adjust. Counters. Program version. All right, reset settings and exit. First, let's actually try the other tip. Since we, since we do want to know if this tip is working or not. Press it on really good. There you go. Now this one is not working. No, this one is this one is broken. There you go. So Yeah, these plastic things are in the way probably. I obviously want something to be in there because it's isolation but I just don't want it to get in the way of the actual contacts which I feel it was you see now it's working and the thing starts to smoke and it's up to temperature now this one used to have problems too. Let's see what happens. This one works. And let's try this one. This one also have seems to have a large a rather large plastic thingy. But this also seems to work fine. But the tip is cracked. The tip just broke. So I guess that I'll just need to order some proper solar filaments and this thing is working that's uh, really cool so let's put it back in its case and let's use this one to really heat something up oh this is not working No, see this really is a problem with this tip, it's really not happy using this tip. 
I think that the contacts are getting stuck between this isolation material and then they'll just bend and touch this instead of this. Yeah, you really need to push it. So yeah, I guess buying new soldering tips will fix this. Um, but it's really a, a bad handle design, in my opinion, that the contacts of the soldering tips can get caught on the inside of the handle which is clearly what happens over here so the conclusion of this video the solar station is just fine it's absolutely fine there is nothing wrong with it these handles is what's wrong with it if you don't push in the filaments far enough the positive pin of this thing which is the middle pin will touch the earth and that's on the that's the larger portion of the tip those two will touch and then uh, the wires inside the handle will heat up since all the current is basically flowing through the earth and the temperature sense wire and that's not really what you want yeah buy other filaments and then it should work or maybe buy other soldering handles as well I'm not sure so that's the conclusion of this video insert them forcefully I'll check to see which one I'm going to buy but first I'll clean the screen of this thing so guys thank you for watching this video please leave a like if you enjoy these kinds of interesting uh, teardown videos and well repair videos I didn't actually repair anything but that doesn't matter so please uh, feel free to comment below on what you think the, the problem uh, could have been or actually is because the problem is still here but we've just found a way to work around it so guys thanks for watching this video please share it with somebody that you think will find it interesting and i hope to see you guys in one of my next videos bye oh hey hello uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.